Whether it was Jamichael Green leaving a cap emoji on LeBron's head via his Instagram story, Steve Kerr claiming the Lakers were flopping, the basketball gods, well, actually, the basketball god in LeBron Raymond James Sr. wasn't having any of that nonsense, as when you question the integrity of the game, the game throws it back in your face every single time. The Warriors didn't just go out sad because they lost, they went out sad because of how they couldn't handle losing to their in-state rivals. This was a team with a clear-as-day lack of resiliency going back to the regular season. How people thought a team that was one of the worst on the road and that was 0-27 entering fourth quarters was going to overcome a 3-1 series lead is beyond me. Not realizing the habits their own team had built up, Dub Nation began to casually rip into the officiating in this series blaming foul discrepancy despite shooting 30 plus threes a game and being a team that doesn't thrive off getting downhill and forcing the refs to blow the whistle like the Lakers do. After getting away with moving screens for over a decade, you'd think these Warrior fans would have some sensibility. We tried to warn Dubs fans what would happen when you trash talk LeBron before this series. Maybe a lot of them listened, but two men who definitely didn't learn that were Steve Kerr and Jermichael Green. Kerr said entering Game 5 with his team down 3-1, quote, The Lakers, they're a team that plays with a lot of gamesmanship. They understand how to generate some calls. I thought they took some flops and were rewarded, end quote. Darvin Ham cleared the air directly after the first quarter to TNT's Chris Haynes, stating, quote, We don't teach flopping, end quote. LeBron also responded to the comment from Kerr, saying, quote, I just know that we, our coaching staff and us players, we don't work on flopping. That's not even a part of our game. Our game is to attack, attack the paint. We don't mind physical contact. We actually like the contact and we don't shy away from it. So we're just not a team that goes out there looking for flopping opportunities, end quote. It's actually funny how many Golden State fans expose themselves as casuals thinking that shooting 48 three-pointers like they did in Game 6 would somehow result in them getting to the foul line more than the slashing-heavy Lakers fueled by beasts like LBJ and AD. Damn, y'all. Who knew when you put pressure on the defense instead of just chucking up threes, it results in getting to the line? Some rocket science right there. You'd think those who claim they've been watching the game for decades would be aware of that. Bob Myers did an interview stating before Game 6 that he hadn't decided on whether or not he himself would re-sign as a Warrior executive. Meanwhile, LeBron certainly decided that he wanted to be the Warriors president in Game 6. If this was rigged for LA Warrior fans, why wasn't Draymond tossed instead of Schroeder in Game 6 while Draymond was allowed to chest bump the refs in Game 5, yet didn't even receive a tech? Damn, y'all. Or how about when Curry was allowed to walk up the court without dribbling, like Russell Westbrook, but unlike on that Westbrook play, nothing was called? What about when LeBron was fouled four separate times on this drive to the basket, but nothing was called? Did we see LeBron and Darvin Ham complain post-game about flopping when Andrew Wiggins took a dive after little to no contact on this drive from LeBron? A five-second back to the basket on LeBron was called in Game 5. A call that literally hadn't been whistled against any player all season in playoffs. In fact, that specific call probably hasn't been enforced on any player for over a decade. This obvious foul that Draymond made back in Game 5, followed by these ruthless complaints, was the very first possession on that night. Watch how he stalks down referee Gidaminas Petritus, yelling directly in his face. Apparently, that isn't a technical foul. How someone could get this heated that early in a basketball game and still not come close to getting hit with a tech is beyond me. When you get down to the facts, it becomes clear that Golden State simply didn't have anyone who could check LeBron James. Andrew Wiggins didn't have the bulk to hold LeBron in check on the block, while Draymond didn't have the foot speed to hold him in check on the perimeter. Andre Iguodala was injured, so he obviously couldn't guard LeBron. While the dubs were failing to make easy layups and open shots in Game 6, 
LeBron was asserting his will on the game with beastly attacks in transition. The Dubs, meanwhile, made just 13 of their 48 threes in this one, a measly 27%. For the Lakers, they were spamming spread ball screens, which were followed by fluid kickouts and smooth jumpers. Whether it was D'Lo, Austin, or Lonnie, the Lakers shooters were spacing the floor perfectly for LeBron and AD. Draymond, on the other hand, was a minus 32 at one point in the second half, while all of the Warrior starters were at least a minus 18 in LA's closeout Game 6 win. If you're LA's Conference Finals opponent in the Denver Nuggets, you'll now have to worry about a LeBron James at the top of his game having over half a week of rest. LBJ on four days rest is something we haven't seen since the regular season. Posting his most efficient game of the playoffs by far, LeBron was just clearing out, posting up, backing down, and falling away. James dropped a merciless 30 points on 79% true shooting, equating to 10 of 14 field goals made, 8 of 11 free throws, and 2 of 3 triples. With the dubs playing zone, that coverage wasn't phasing James whatsoever, who was finding teammates like D'Lo spaced out on the perimeter. Lonnie Walker getting back into the rotation has been a dope storyline as well. Man had 13 in this one. Austin Reeves had a half-court buzzer beater. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. He would also accidentally smack a fan directly after that. He'd apologize to the man post-game. LeBron had a towering rebound and took it coast to coast before dropping a no-look dime to Rui. The living, breathing, my career player D'Angelo Russell would get caught yet again trying to flex his new drink. Curry would say in his post-game interview that he was shell-shocked the season was over. Kerr would call out Bob Myers by saying, quote, This is not a championship team. If it were, we'd be moving on. End quote. Draymond would echo those sentiments. It was great to see AD post 20 rebounds. No need for a wheelchair after this game. That's about it.